Squirkles. Squirkles everywhere. There's squirkles on the screens? Dashboards? <laughs> the steering wheel's a squirkle. The horn's a squirkle. The wing mirror's a squirkle. The squared circles. They're everywhere! Squared circles? Squared circles are everywhere. Driving me crazy! Okay, maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but what Fiat's done is essentially made a car that's a square with rounded edges and then filled it with lots of little squares with rounded edges. At first I was like, cool, I see what they've done there, that's interesting. But the more I look at them, the more I think, pick another shape, a rectangle, a regular circle, an isosceles triangle, anything. Okay, deep breath. This here is the Fiat Panda Cross and it's one of the weirdest cars on the road and not just because of the questionable design decisions. Let me explain where it fits in. You've got the standard Panda, which is already one of the most bonkers cars on the planet. Then you've got the Panda 4x4, which is even wackier, an off-roading Panda, come off it. And then you've got this Panda Cross, which is an upmarket Panda that's even better at going off-road. All the oxymorons ever. It's fair to say that most people who drive the Fiat Panda Cross aren't going to do anything more strenuous with it than maybe drive over a bit of wet grass, some leaves, that kind of thing. But that would be a massive shame because this car is incredibly capable. I'm in the middle of a quarry right now. A quarry. Cars don't come down here. There are no roads, just mud tracks, lakes, and a lot of stuff that can rip a car to shreds. So there are two driving modes in terms of its off-roading ability. One of them is fully automatic. You leave it in the standard setting on the traction control knob down here by the center console. And that will basically detect any slip in the front wheels. If the front wheel's slipping about, it will activate drive for the rear wheels, giving you extra traction. Now there's a slight delay in that activation. It takes a couple of hundred milliseconds, which isn't ideal when you're going off road. But there's a second mode, a dedicated four x four mode. You slide the knob into the second position and that will reduce the amount of time it takes for the car to engage the rear wheels. Right now I'm wading through a lake and this isn't your average puddle in the city. This is a, a pretty serious body of water. And as you can see, Fiat Panda Cross is coping absolutely fine. They've moved the vents in the car higher up onto the bodywork to increase the wading depth, and that means no water gets into the engine and the thing doesn't get flooded. Right now, we're going over some rocks, slippery rocks, I might add. <laughs> Just give the engine a squirt. There's a 1.3 litre diesel in this one, and it does the job absolutely fine. Now, there's a pretty steep hill here. I'm not going to floor it, I'm not going to gun it, I'm just going to drive up it very gently and again no drama whatsoever pretty incredible stuff for a car that you wouldn't expect to be able to do this there's a guy who actually works on the quarry around here that told me uh, he drives a Land Rover Defender he told me that that Defender is struggling to get around this course it basically it's quite heavy so it digs into the mud and gets itself stranded whereas this it's a relatively lightweight car and that means it doesn't dig itself in. I've got quite a decent slope just ahead of us right now, so I'll engage the hill descent control. Uh, just let it roll, and again, the car does it all for me. All I have to do is point it generally in the right direction, and it will apply the brakes to give me the right amount of descent without locking the wheels, without any drama, without any fuss. Fair play to Fiat, man. I've got to say, they could have easily just copped out stuck a 4x4 badge on this thing and called it a day, but they've gone the whole hog. They've given it all the credentials you need, all the capability that you need to get around really, really demanding courses like this in relatively little fuss. This isn't just a 4x4 by name. It's a 4x4 by nature. If all of that doesn't convince you and you're still wondering what the Fiat Panda Cross is like on the road, the answer is, well, it's just as capable. It's no sports car, obviously, 
but it's a decent City runabout that gets on with things without fuss and drives well. It doesn't come cheap, so you could argue it's a little bit over-engineered, like fireproof baby nappies or self-lacing shoes. No one really needs it to be as good as it is, but that's a compliment in itself. If you're looking for a car that can do pretty much everything and stands out from the crowd, and you don't mind squirkles, well then the Fiat Panda Cross is a winner. This isn't your ordinary uh, day at the office, I've got to say. I'm now driving up a ramp into the back of a Boeing 747. 